commitment. A coalition of forces with the United States, UK, France launched airstrikes against Libya over the weekend after the UN Security Council Friday approved a no-fly zone. On Saturday morning, Mohamed Nabus, a Libyan citizen journalist in Benghazi, was shot and killed. Nabus, known as Mo, established Libya Ahara TV to broadcast online live feeds and commentary from the uprising that began last month. Described as the face of citizen journalism in Libya, Nabus was killed while reporting on attacks by pro-Gaddafi forces. This is a clip from his last report from Benghazi. You can hardly make out what he's saying, but you do hear the intense gunfire. With that, the radio broadcast went dead. Mohamed Naboos had been killed. In an emotional message on Mo's al Hara TV this weekend, his wife, Perdita Naboos, announced his death and appealed to the pro-democracy movement to continue his work. I'm Mo's wife, and I want to let all of you know that Mohamed has passed away for this cause. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. He died for this cause and let's hope that Libya will become free. And let's not stop doing what we are doing until this is over. What he started has got to go on. No matter what happens. Last month, Democracy Now! correspondent Anjali Khamet spoke to Mohamed Nabas when she was in Benghazi at the media center there about his involvement in the anti government protests. I am Mohamed Mustafa Nabous from Benghazi, Libya. Uh, Mohamed, describe what your role has been in, in, in this revolution. I don't know exactly, but I think what was important that I have done was on the first day on the 17th when we had the, or the 18th, I don't remember anymore, on the on the corniche, on the, on the opposite side of the court. We had a setup like this one, but with a minimum, you know, equipment that we just tried to deliver our voices to the outside world when I talked to the CNN live. Well, talk about how you're getting information out. I'm hearing that you have set up a two-way internet system. How do you get through Gaddafi's internet blocking? It's not through the internet uh, of the Gaddafi. It's actually a separate, uh, independent internet that is connected to the satellite. And from the satellite, it's uh, on the dish. And from the dish to the satellite, immediately to the outside world. And ha have you had experience doing this before? Uh, yes, I uh, worked as an uh, ISP, Internet Service Provider, for about three, four years before. And that's how I got my experience to set up everything in here. But I have got help even from other people who are trying to help by any how they can, by equipment, by, uh, you know, by services. I mean, they opened the service from the outside, from the inside. This is a two-part question, right? One, did you expect this to happen so quickly, right? The fall of Benghazi, but to be free of Qaddafi's forces. And what, you know, what did you do leading up to February 17th to participate a, in the initial call for the demonstration? Mm -hmm. And leading up to that, what that's were the different... Question by question. Yeah. The first question was about uh, if it's going to fall sooner or later. It was falling every day. And it was obvious that it was falling every day because we never stopped. At night, people would just go out and keep pressure on the army, uh, the private forces, and everybody. And in the morning, all everyone would, you know, protest against the system. People were dying, yes, but they were dying for a good cause and they will never be forgotten. And if you look outside of here, you will see a picture of everyone that has actually been killed in this protests. So uh, the second question you have asked, how, how did I? How did you get involved? Like talk about putting the call out for February 17th and you said you were involved even before that, right? Like yes, on the, on the Facebook and all the other websites like Twitter, like, uh, you know, I was just trying to send as many information as I can to encourage people to go on the 17th. But 
fortunately it happened even before the, the 17th, it happened on the 15th and I was so happy to go on the streets. I was trying to find these protesters but the first day we couldn't find anyone. So the second day uh, we found some people and we started protesting but it wasn't that serious. The third day it was really serious and the fourth day it was really serious and then we just, you know, joined our brothers and sisters down here in front of the court and we started getting united and just, you know, telling people what we want, telling what we have to say. We started, you know, uh, chanting and writing signs and just doing all of what we can do. What inspired you to get involved with the 17th demonstration? The system. I mean, me, myself, I wasn't actually damaged by the system that much, but other people are really suffering from the system, so it's not fair. Not because I am, I am happily, I mean, living uh, in a normal life, that means everybody else is. I mean, even, even some people were telling me, why are you on the streets? Why are you demonstrating? You have nothing to complain. You have everything. Why are you here? I was like, it doesn't matter. I mean, there are other people that I can see they are suffering and they need more. And if my country is better, I'm going to be even better. Mohammed Nabous was killed on Saturday as he was broadcasting live on the air during Gaddafi's assault on Benghazi. You can hear Anjali's full interview with Mo on our website at democracynow.org when she was in Syria with him.